This is how much sugar goes into this bottle of store-bought ketchup. I love ketchup, but not this kind with all the sugar, corn syrup and additives. Just way too sweet for my taste. I know a tablespoon of ketchup you put on a burger won't kill you, but if you eat this condiment on a regular basis, I would definitely consider a healthier version. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a delicious no sugar homemade ketchup that's good for you and your family. And my goal was to make something simple that tastes as great, even better than store bought stuff. And the great thing about homemade ketchup is that you can control the ingredients, the sweetness, salt and spices, just like you prefer. Most homemade recipes use tomato puree and not really the fresh tomatoes, which is totally fine if you make your ketchup during the cold months, but I'm going to celebrate the season and stick with making my ketchup with fresh vegetables. It takes a little bit more time, but the taste is well worth the effort. In a heavy bottom pan I add 3 cups chopped tomatoes, quarter cup water, one diced onion for sweetness and I bring it to a boil. Also I prefer adding one apple into the mix, all with a peel because it has natural pectin which will help to get a nice and thick consistency and it will add some extra sweetness. This is a small batch recipe so you actually don't need a lot of time, I just cover and cook at low temperature for about 40 minutes. But if you're not willing to invest the time and effort in making it from scratch, I would suggest you skip this step and use the canned tomatoes or tomato paste combined with some applesauce. Actually the canned ones give me better results than tasteless off-season tomatoes. When everything is cooked, I blend it with a hand blender because I want to extract all of the rich and naturally sweet tomato sauce. And I need to run the mixture through a sieve in order to remove all the seeds and leftover skin, which is important for getting the perfect ketchup consistency. Now at this point I add the seasonings and I'm going to give the taste first, because I want to check the sweetness and see if I need to add sugar at all. These fresh tomatoes combined with onions and apple give just enough sweetness for me, but if you want it more sweet you can add 1 tablespoon maple syrup. Anyway I'm going to add 1 tablespoon apple cider vinegar, 1 tablespoon tomato paste to add richness and improve the color, 1 teaspoon yellow mustard for balance and about half teaspoon salt. I like to keep it as simple as possible because if I keep adding bunch of other ingredients I'll just end up with a barbecue sauce. Now I bring it back to low heat and cook for another 10 minutes stirring occasionally, but if your tomatoes are more watery simmer it off until all the excess water has evaporated, let's say for additional 5 to 10 minutes. Otherwise you'll need to add some sort of a thickener and I find all flour combined with a little bit of water works just fine. And when you achieve a consistency you like, remove from the heat. After it cools down to room temperature I transfer to a jar or squeeze bottle and I keep it in the fridge. There's no preservatives, but it'll be good for about 2 to 3 weeks. And if you eat ketchup with everything, make sure you double the recipe. The final product is quite like the regular ketchup and it would be great for dipping your french fries or glazing a meatloaf. And the taste for me is just better than anything I can buy in a store. As you could see this homemade ketchup is super easy to make even though it takes some time, not sugary but rich in tomato flavor and definitely healthier than the commercial ones. Anyway I love to add ketchup over my savory baked oats, which is a nutritious and fun way to eat your oatmeal. It makes a great weeknight dinner option and it's a perfect recipe for using your leftovers. Check out that recipe now, thank you so much for watching, see you in another video, stay healthy, stay happy.